Solarian Studios just dropped Update 21 for our favorite up-and-coming RPG, Baldur's Gate 3, and it's jam-packed with juicy details above and beyond the panel from hell we all just witnessed a few days ago. Perhaps most important, and this is at the end of the newsletter, which we'll be covering in full details over here on the Steam page, is the fact that there is no July 31st three-day head start for PC people. I've been telling everybody that since the panel from hell. I'm like, look, they didn't mention it during the panel from hell. That obscure screenshot on the Reddit thread is not proof. Please stop spreading the rumor. Stop jumping into my live streams and telling people that July 31st is a thing. Please wait for them to make an announcement. They did. They just made the announcement in this newsletter. It's at the end. We'll cover it. But there is no three-day head start. It's August 3rd for everyone across the board. Don't be fooled. Don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. Without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into this because it is a recap of the panel from hell, but they've got a lot more juicy details with screenshots and everything else throughout here. So let us kind of pour through it. So we obviously get um, some screenshots now to go along with the panel from hell updates about all the cool new features that are coming to character creation. So we've got freckles, vitiligo, piercings, horn color customizations for tieflings, new tattoo designs, new scars, new lip makeup customization, as well as heterochromia, which is um, different colored eyes, which is really, really cool. We also saw the age slider in effect in the panel from hell and body types, which allow people to have different body sizes across all of the various genders. There's also um, a lot more information here on multiclassing, which I know a lot of people had um, been asking about and there was no real details on it other than that they confirmed it at the panel from hell. Um, I'm not a person who multi-classes personally i like to keep my class identity all the way through but they're doing something really unique with multi-classing and i'm going to be doing a full video about this later on so make sure you know you like subscribe and all those things so that you never miss an update from the channel but essentially they are allowing you to multi-class any way that you want and they've gotten rid of prerequisites which means and they even talk about how there's an achievement for this at the end they say that you have the freedom to build the exact class you want even if that means um, deciding to evenly spread all of your points into every class for no strategic reason whatsoever, because there is an achievement for that. Um, but essentially, um, they've gotten rid of the ability score prerequisites so that that's not a thing anymore. And you can literally take any, you could be a level, you could be a ranger, barbarian, sorcerer, monk, whatever. You could combine all of these things together if you wanted to up to level 12. It's pretty cool. It's very, very unique in what they're doing here. So for those of you who wanted to know about multi-classing, this is Juicy Deets. There's also this information about respecking, which we heard mention of in the panel from Hell. They give us a few more details here, but I think it's going to be the same NPC that we already talked to about resurrecting from the dead and stuff. Um, basically, you're going to go back to him and you will be able to uh, give you the opportunity to restart your build from level 1 with new starting proficiencies, attributes, spells, and cantrips. So if you get to level 5, 10, whatever, you spent 10, you know, 15, 20, 30 hours in the game, and you decide you don't like the way you've spec'd your character, the multi-classing, etc., you can go all the way back to ground zero if you want without losing all of your story progress, which is actually really cool. My initial reaction to respec was like, meh, but after I've, you know, after we know how, you know, the fact that it's like 80 to 100 hours in the base gameplay, it makes sense to not have them lose their story progress, so I can get behind it now in the way that they're doing it. We also get more information about mercenaries. Now there is some still some very confusing wording here. I'll tell you how I interpret it and we'll see how it is at launch. They mention here that there are 12 hirelings available for you to recruit, one for each class, each with their own name, visuals, and race, which can be respected at any time. And it says you can have hirelings join you on the road. They are mercenaries who can be hired to join your team temporarily. However, it also says here, should you choose, you can create a custom party without any origins. So I'm confused here. Can we create a custom party from scratch, or can we only create our origin character, and then once we get into the game, we can then hire the mercenaries to fulfill our desires for a, a group of whatever makeup that it is that we want? I don't have an answer to that, but my interpretation is that you create your character at launch, you get into the game, you find mercenaries to hire, and then you can bring them into your party from there and create your party from scratch. That's how I interpret it. I don't know that it's actually going to be create your own party from scratch at the beginning because they have all the origin stories and everything else and we just didn't see that in the panel from hell and if that was going to be a thing that you're going to be able to create a custom party from scratch at character creation i think they would have shown that in the panel from hell that's supposition on my part love to hear your theories otherwise 
We also get more information on the origin character backgrounds and everything else. I covered this in a video earlier today, so this is old news to those of you who follow my channel. Dark Urge, I'll be talking about this in an upcoming video, but essentially this is you creating a custom character who has a forgotten past. A lot of people are, you know, guessing that this might have something to do with the ball spawn of Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 and you just don't remember any of it, but essentially you're always going to have this thing in your ear that's urging you to do dark, nasty things, and along the way you've got this guy who's your servant named Skeleritus. Skeleritus Fell, voiced by Brian Bowles, who, or Bowles, I don't know how you pronounce his name, who is the narrator for Divinity Original Sin 2. Kind of cool. Says the Dark Urge can even form a romantic relationship just like any other origin characters. Now, then we get into the actual romances, and we saw a lot. Some of us saw more than we bargained for. Um, I was not one of those. I was laughing the whole way through that that scene. You know exactly what scene I'm talking about from the panel from hell. But um, they talk a lot about romances here. It sounds like we've got the traditional span of romances. But it also says that if you give in to the every whim of your romantic partner, you could find yourself uh, becoming a vampire, getting turned into a vampire, getting sacrificed in an evil god's sex rite, or even getting married. So there's a lot of ways that this could go depending on how you romance your partners and where the game takes you and how things play out over Acts 1, 2, and 3. It sounds to me like we're getting a much richer and deeper romantic series of options than we've ever seen in any game before from an RPG. So I'm really look, you know, looking forward to this. I'm really excited about seeing you know, how this is going to go. So food for thought. Um, they also talk about alchemy. I love the screenshot here. Um, you're going to be able to take all those things we've been collecting in the wild, herbs, mushrooms, crystals, monster limbs, and you're going to be able to create potions, poisons, and oils to imbibe or coat your weapons with. And there's going to be a bunch of recipes, which I don't know if you get those innately or if you're going to be finding those throughout the game. I just don't know. I don't know that they've said anything about that yet, so we're waiting to see more information on What's that. up, everybody? Time for the commercial part of the video, and the first thing we're doing is giving a shout-out to all of our guild champions who are the highest tier memberships here on YouTube. Thanks to Ancient Entity, Bubblonia Rising, Crazy's Relative, Mujin, and Remy D. Thanks so much for your support. And of course, thanks to all of the people who support here on YouTube as members. I appreciate it. It keeps me on the air full time. If you haven't already done so, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon. And if you too want to support the channel, you can join as a member. You can also do super chats on any live stream or premiere that you see or super thanks on any uploaded video or YouTube short that you see. Don't forget the Discord. Let's get back to the video at hand. See more information on that. We also saw the third villain in the panel from Hell, and this is called Orin the Red. She's a practitioner in the art of inflicting pain and a grandmaster of murder. <laughs> Split scene co-op multiplayer. We saw that in the trailer. I'm excited about controller support because my old man hands don't like WSD and mouse and keyboard anymore. So I love the idea of jumping on a plane with a controller. I also can't wait to play this with my brother, maybe on the Series X at some point in time. But in the meantime, we're PC bound, but I'm looking forward to being able to jump in with a controller. Um, we're already doing multiplayer on Tuesdays. Um, there's some wonkiness to multiplayer still. I still think they need to to change the conversation thing to where once someone initiates a conversation, everyone gets pulled in, kind of like in Star Wars Yield Republic, because that as it stands right now, if you've watched any of our multiplayer streams as we've tested, people can be in a completely different zone, talking to an NPC, picking up quests, turning in quests, doing whatever, and you're over here gardening, and suddenly you get a quest update and an XP drop, and you're like, what just happened? And you have to go to your journal and figure out, oh, somebody must have just turned in a quest somewhere. Not a big fan of that. I don't know the reasoning behind it. I'd love to hear their reasonings behind it, but I would much prefer like a Star Wars Yoda Public option where it's like, you can't do a conversation unless you're all there. Also, so I noticed the other day um, um, one of our party members kept n getting left behind when we would leave an area, um, likely because we weren't communicating enough. But in original Baldur's Gate 1 and 2, if you were going to try to leave an area without your party, you would get that, you know, you must gather your party before adventuring forth. That is not the case here. You could totally abandon your group mates and go off and do other things. So, you know, only play multiplayer with people you trust, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's mention here of the 174 hours of cinematic content more than 2,000 characters to interact with and a golden path that takes over 80 hours to complete and those of us who are going to be doing completionist runs will be getting probably 150 to 200 hour runs from our playthroughs really cool stuff um, uh, they talk about the newspaper in Baldur's Gate um, 
talking about the streaming, this is an important thing because there is nudity in this game and the sexual encounters. They are including a couple of options for streamers to turn off nudity and to turn off genitalia um, so that if you're streaming, you can have it all off. But if you're playing in a personal session, you can have it all turned back on and see all the juicy little tidbits that you want to see, like bear parts, maybe. I don't know what you're... Yeah, we, we don't know what I'm referring to. Nope. And here's the part that's very, very important. They confirm the PC Digital Deluxe Edition does not include a 72-hour head start, which means everything is about the August 3rd date. Um, this was something that they didn't clarify well enough, uh, but they didn't mention it from the panel from hell, so a lot of people just assumed, oh, we're still getting that three-day thing, but that's not the case. The game is August 3rd for everyone, so please don't take days off. I, I, I told you, don't, 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 don't do anything until you hear the word from him. They gave the word, so... Those are the updates as I have read them. Don't forget to check out Community Update 21 at your leisure. And of course, like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you never miss an update as we continue to talk about, play, stream, and all the other things around Baldur's Gate 3 and all the other things we do here on the channel. Hopefully we'll see you over in Discord. Support if you can with Super Chats, memberships, and beyond. And I'll see everybody in the next video or live stream. Stay safe, everybody. Happy gaming.